In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the area and perimeter of our polygons, and more specifically, our regular polygons. In the polygons at the top of the page, the triangle, parallelogram, rectangle, square, and trapezoid, these are formulas you should already know and should already have memorized. If you don't have them memorized, you need to memorize those. So I'm going to move down to our regular polygons. Remember, regular means all angle measures of the polygon as well as all sides of the polygon are congruent, okay, or have the same measure. In the box, it says the center of a regular polygon. So the center is right here. That center is equidistant from its vertices. So the distance from the center to this vertice is the same as center to vertice here, is the same as center to vertice here, center to vertice, center to vertice. All of those distances are the same. So we can look at that as being the center of a circle. So if I take a look, you don't have to use your compass to draw this but I just want to show you that it would be the center of the circle that's drawn. Okay, let's close that. And you can see that the center goes all through uh, each one of those vertices. So we can look at that distance from the center to a vertice as a radius of the circle. So this arrow here is a radius. Now we say that the circle is circumscribed about the polygon, which means that it's drawn around. It's not within the figure, but it's on the outside. The next sentence, the distance from the center to a sign. So let's grab the blue. This distance from the center to a side of the polygon, this arrow here, that's called the apothem of the polygon. That apothem is the altitude of one of those triangles within the pentagon. So when I drew all of those radii, it formed one, two, three, four, five triangles. And that apothem is the altitude. Once again, if this is a radius, each one of these segments are the same. So it's an altitude of an isosceles triangle formed by these adjacent radii. The central angle of a regular polygon, and the central angle is right here, right where these two segments form an angle, right here at the center, this is the central angle. The measure of that central angle is going to be 360 for the circle divided by the number of sides. So it's divided by n, where n is equal to the number of sides. The number of sides a polygon has is equal to the number of triangles formed. So we had five sides. We had a pentagon here, so we have our five triangles that were formed within. It says the number of triangles formed, which is e also equal to the number of arcs formed. So when we drew those segments from the center to the vertice, it divided the circle into arcs. We have one arc, two arcs, three arcs, four, and five. So the number of sides in the polygon is equal to the number of triangles that are formed within it, and it's also equal to the number of arcs formed. In degrees, okay, that measure of the arc is uh, intercepted by the central angle is equal to the degree measure of your central angle. And using triangles, we can calculate the area of any regular
polygon. Doesn't matter how many sides. Remember, N stands for the number of sides. So I take a look at this figure here. It's regular, so this means that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven congruent sides. So this is a heptagon. So we're going to find the area of this heptagon. We don't need a formula to do so, okay? But I'm going to show you where or how the formula comes about or how we derive it using our work shown here for this heptagon, okay? So let's say each side is four inches. And the distance from the center to one of these sides is six inches. The first thing you want to do is break it up into triangles. Remember, any um, polygon with n sides is going to have n triangles. So in the heptagon, when I break it up, drawing from the center to each vertice, we're going to have seven triangles. So one, two, three. Seven. OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now what we do is we find the area, whoops, I didn't want to undo it that many times. We want to find the area of one triangle. So I'm going to focus right here on this triangle here. As we mentioned above, the apothem is the altitude. So to find the area of the heptagon, we take the area of that one triangle, which is one half base times height, so it would be one half of four times six, times the number of triangles. So this is going to be that area times seven. One half of four times six, that's going to be 12. This four times six is 24, and 12 times seven is 84 square inches. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to derive the formula from this. Again, we didn't need the formula, but using this equation, we're going to come up with the formula for the area of a regular polygon. So let's look at what we have. We had the area of the A was the apothem. And then we had, um, I'm sorry, the 6 was the apothem. The 4 was the length of a side. And then we had the times 7. Well, this side here of 4 times 7 this is the perimeter of the figure. 4 times 7 is we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4 times 7 is the perimeter. And then so our formula would be 1 half of P times the apothem. That's the formula for the area of a regular polygon. Okay, so we'll practice using this formula, but as I've shown you, we don't need to use the formula in order to find our answer. So starting with number one, that's real quick, easy, find the perimeter, okay? It's mentioning that it's a regular octagon which has eight sides. It's telling me the side length is 12, so the perimeter is going to be 12 times 8, which is 96. And I'm going to put units as no unit was given. On the back side, it says find the area of the regular pentagon. Now, two and three both want us to find the area. One is breaking it up into triangles, okay? And then the other is using the formula. So to break it up into triangles, I only really need to focus on one triangle at the moment. So that's 2.2 .2 as a side. The area of that one triangle is 1 half base times height. And then if it's a pentagon, five sides means five triangles. And we can continue to break it up just so you can actually see the five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I take the area of one and then I multiply it by five. Multiplying all three of those numbers, we get an area of 8.25 centimeters squared. Now some of you are really good at memorizing formulas, okay? But in this case, you don't have to. You can just break it up into triangles and then multiply the area of one triangle by the number of triangles you have. Some of you, though, like to use formulas and pretty good at memorizing formulas. So we're actually going to use the formula here, which area equals one half of the perimeter times the apothem. 
in this question here, we have a mistake. It says, find the area of a regular pentagon. This is a hexagon. As we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So we have a typo. So using the formula, we have uh, one half of the perimeter. So down here, I'm going to show the work for perimeter. One half of six times 10, as each side length is 10. And there's six sides. So the perimeter is 60. So the area is one half of 60 times the apothem. And so again, the apothem distance from the center to a side. And it's telling us it's the distance as it's shown that it's measured perpendicular. And when we measure distance, we measure the length of the segment that is perpendicular as that's the shortest one. So then times 5 radical 3. Well, half of 60 is 30. And 30 times 5 radical 3 is 150 radical 3. Since there's no unit, I'm going to put units squared. And our last question, number four. Find both the perimeter and area. And we're going to use what's called the box and method. And that's to find the area. But let's first focus on the perimeter of this triangle. This triangle is in the coordinate plane. So the first thing we want to do is make note of its coordinates. A is the point negative 5, 8. C is the point 4, 2. And B is the point negative 1 negative 3. I'm going to first focus on the perimeter. So I need to find the length of each side. And each side is slanted, so I'm going to be using the distance formula. So AB, side AB, that length is equal to x2 minus x1, negative 1 minus a negative 5 squared, plus y2 minus y1, negative 3 minus 8 squared. I'm going to write them all down first and then go back and do the math. AC is going to be 4 minus a negative 5 squared plus 2 minus 8 squared. And then last, I got ABAC, I need CB. And CB is equal to 4 minus a negative 1 squared plus 2 minus a negative 3 squared. All right, now I'm going to go back and do the math. This becomes, so negative 1 minus negative 5 becomes plus. So now 4 squared, this is going to be the square root of 16 plus. Negative 3 minus negative 8 is a negative 11 squared, 121, for a length of one square root of 137. AC, again, subtract a negative becomes positive. So 4 plus 5 is 9 squared, 81. 2 minus 8 is a negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. So the length of AC is the square root of 117. And then last, 4 minus a negative becomes plus. And now I have 5 squared, which is 25. Again, plus here, 2 negatives, 5 squared, and 5 squared, another 25. So CB is equal to the square root of 50. Now, if it says to run to the nearest 10, that means to round. So the perimeter is equal to radical 137 plus the square root of 117 plus the square root of 50, which is equal to 29.5924210. To the nearest tenth, the perimeter is going to be approximately 29. Since to the right of the 5 is a 9, it's going to bump it up to 6 units. Now area. Area is 1 half base times height, but since I don't have a horizontal or vertical measurement for these two dimensions, I'm going to use the box in method. So the box in method is to literally box in the triangle with a rectangle. And when you do that, you have three right triangles. There's one right triangle here. We'll call that triangle one. Second right triangle up here. 
So I'll call this number two. And then a third right triangle here. I'll call this triangle number three for my work. So what we do is, is we find the area of the whole rectangle, subtract these three triangles, and we're left with a triangle inside. So I'm going to take a minute to count each length. So starting at this corner, counting right, the horizontal segment is nine units. This vertical segment is 11 for my rectangle. Okay, so the area of the rectangle is 9 times 11, or 99 units squared. Okay, now I need to find the area of each triangle to subtract. So triangle number 1 is 11 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So the area of right triangle number 1 is one half of four times 11. Half of four is two, two times 11 is 22. And then I have, well if the whole is nine, that part's four, segment addition, subtract the four from the nine, we get five. And then one, two, three, four, five here. If I know the total is 11, this must be six. And then we know this is nine. So the area of right triangle three, I'm gonna go out of order, left, right, would be one half of five by five, half of 25 is 12.5. And then the area of right triangle two is one half of six by nine. Half of six is three, and three times nine is 27. So that's a total area for all those triangles of 61.5. So now to find the area of the given triangle, okay, which is not a right triangle, we take the area of the rectangle and subtract the area of the three right triangles. So that was 99 minus 61.5, which gives us an area of 37.5 square units.